right, you guys have seen it. The three versus four. You've seen the dead girl. You've seen the slaughterhouse. The little poster over in the corner. We've seen a lot of cool things that really kind of sneak peek the game. But I want to get down to the thing that really has me excited for the game. And as long as it's really executed well, I'm really excited to see how this is going to be executed the stealth gameplay many of you have heard me just go over and over and over again on all these asymmetrical games some have got it kind of right hide or die got really close but they had other things that were just really bad about the game and it and it ruined what they had going with the stealth mechanics but that's it the stealth gameplay i think is going to be an important thing an important ingredient toward getting the tension and the uh the the adrenaline rush that you want to feel in a horror asymmetrical game with friends you know so the the objective is to get as close to a horror movie the way you used to feel maybe as a kid or even as an adult when you find a good horror movie that somebody's executed really well these days it's getting harder and harder matt sacha went over this uh briefly on reddit and now they've posted an official post on their website blog describing a little bit more of the stealth. And these are the things that you guys have heard me. I just like some of these things I've went over on Friday the 13th. And that's what makes me so happy that they're putting this with more of a focus in Texas Chainsaw. Because I think Friday the 13th, if it had more of a stealth focus to it where... Somehow you get that, oh, Jason came out of the trees over here, and then, oh, now he's behind me, and it, and it freaks me out a little bit because I didn't know he was there and he got so close. You know, those kinds of things, that, that feeling of how did he get so close to me and I didn't notice. But you can't really do that in Friday the 13th because you can just use abilities that negate those feelings, I feel. So we got... We got the team over here. They wrote their blog. You know, they say there's a distinct sense of cat and mouse in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Moments of tension abruptly ending with a clash of action, followed by, if the victim is crafty enough, a return to the relatively relative safety of being on the edge of another clash. Having broken line of sight, struggling to choke down heavy breaths within a hiding place as a family member lurks in the next room, undoing all you have done to get away. I like the little bit of story writing there. It's a pretty common concept in horror. Build tension and release it. This is so important. But the uncommon is found in how you build it and how you release it. This is very true. I'll let you guys kind of go through and read a lot of this. Basically, you can tell that they've tested the game. They've been testing this game a lot, right? They want people to go in and they're seeing over and over how people hide. Uh, are the hiding places working? Are there moments where, you know, big moments in a lot of games I played, especially, you know, DBD and hide or die probably being the biggest, is when you're in a corner, you're in the shadows, right? You're hiding, you're not moving. This happens a lot. Um, Leatherface is coming straight towards you or whatever killer may be. Jason, whatever game you've played in the past. They're coming straight towards you, but they don't see you. But you as the victim have to be like, you know, some people freak out and they get up and run. And, and a lot of times as the killer, like literally daily, I'll be like, whoa, I didn't see that person. But because they got up and ran, now I see them. They could have stayed there and they would have been safe. So a lot of times, you know, the, the, the survivor player, if they would, if they, that's when you know they're feeling the tension, right? Because they're, they're freaked out for a second and they get up and run. But if they had sat still... They would have been safe, but you freak out because it looks like they're looking at you. That's the whole thing is it looks like the killer's looking at you. So you freak out because you think they're coming. You, you think they see you and they're coming to hit, get you, but they don't. Like I've had a lot of times where I've sat in a shadow, right? And then the killer approaches me and it does. It's freaky. It's a, it builds your tension a little bit, but then they, they, they get really close to you and then they turn. They do a 90 degree turn and they go keep going and you're like, oh. <gasps> What the fuck just happened? You know that I love that. Bring into, I'll show you how it works, chat. Oh, never mind. Maybe I might not get to. <sighs> what the fuck? Cut this. Oh fuck. He 
plates? No way! Uh, ah! Uh, <laughs> Are you serious? Oh, uh, yeah. Damn, what? I can't find fuck? no weapons. Ramens, can you clip this so I can find it later? This is crazy. Alright, mine's open. At the train station. Dude, he's still trying to find me. I'm even moving around. Some games do that, but it's always these little magical moments, right, that happen. But if, if a game can get that feeling and that, that interaction, at least for that part of the stealth while you're hiding, if they can nail that to where it's happening frequently, then, uh, then they've hit something really special, I feel. And then the chases, they haven't really talked to too much. They kind of hinted at what happens after that point. You know, they're just talking about the the pre. The first part is when you get when you when you're getting found. You know, you're getting hunted. That's the first phase, the hunt. And then the second phase is when you get found. That little space between in the middle. What happens? Does the survivor retaliate? No. Yes. And then after that little middle part, the chase happens. Is he gonna catch you? Can you rehide again? All that good stuff. I can't wait to see what they're doing with this i i'm excited this blows me away that they're they're heading in that direction so they've they've won me back over with the stealth talk like i'm i'm very excited for that um evil dead the game has also been putting out their their pre-orders they haven't really shown any gameplay though like actual match gameplay and i'm concerned for that so i'm not pre-ordering anything evil dead until they show some stuff you know but anyway outside of that Texas Chainsaw. I like it. You guys, thanks for watching. I'll be covering Evil Dead and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre as time goes on. We also have a multiplayer group over on my Twitch, a home for people to play multiplayer games. I'm calling it the Multiplayer Zone on my Discord. Join the Discord, place to talk to everybody, get to know everybody better. We're starting a cool family over there. We're going to be playing Evil Dead and Texas Chainsaw like crazy. So if you're interested in that, follow the Twitch. If you're interested in more content, Evil Dead and Texas Chainsaw, hit that bell, hit the subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye.